Sometimes it's hard, man. Sometimes it's hard to know what you're at. Yeah. Fake it till you make it. <laughs> I mean, that's what we're doing, right? <laughs> Pretty much. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Dead House. Today we've got some bonus material for you guys. It's May 15th and while we're on our short unavoidable break, uh, we are coming to you with our experience being panelists and just having a fun time at Sci-Fi on the Rock. Yes. This was its 13th year and it was March 29th to the 31st, 2019. And it was my first year attending. So, you know, go yeah. big or go home, I suppose. This was your first time ever attending the convention. Yeah. I've been attending it for like the past five years or something, but this was your first ever. Yeah, I really wanted to go last year, but it didn't work out. So I'm really happy that I got there this year to take it in. It was so much fun. Man, exciting. Yeah. It's always a really nice convention. Like, I always enjoy it a lot. I see a lot of people I know, people from just nerdy community stuff that I don't get to see all the time, friends that, like, I get to reconnect with, and and then you get to meet all these neat celebrities and hear their stories, and a lot of them have really good stories when you see their panels of, like, how they got started and, mm -hmm. like, their background, things you wouldn't necessarily know just from, like, reading Wikipedia, you know, because you get to hear their firsthand experiences and, like, how they grew up and mm -hmm. stuff. And if you've been following Twitter on the day of the convention or the two days that we were there, um, <clears throat> I managed to put up a couple of pictures and... Um, I'm big on character shots, so I met yes. Jason. I wasn't wearing my shirt, but I met Jason. And Which was awesome. His costume was good. Oh, it was right on point. He's usually there, like, pretty much every year. Um, I think he was at the Horror Con in... Uh, Probably. I missed that. We had our first ever horror convention this past year, but that yeah. was something I didn't get a chance to attend. No, neither did I, but I'm looking forward to going this year. Yeah, I would like to go mm -hmm. um, to we the should, next one as well. We should make that arrangement. Mm -hmm. Road trip. Whee! <laughs> um, and you also got to meet the Yip Yips who were there every year. I love the <laughs> Yip Yips so much. I've yet to get my picture with them, which is crazy. Their but... costumes were so on point. Oh, I, but like they also act and like get in character for it with their costumes. It's yeah. so good. They're so much fun to see. Yeah, and I was so happy to see them because I'm a big fan of Jim Henson. And you never told me that they were there. I know. So when I see them from across the room, I, I was like, waiting. fan girl. I was waiting for the reaction. Yeah. If I would have moved faster, I would have moved faster. Yeah, but they've been there like the past several years now. Oh my like, God. It's something I always look forward to seeing because they're always so in character. And the blue one is always very timid and tries to hide. I think it started out with just two of them and it like expanded to like three very quickly and like the three of them always get together and do it. It's so much fun. Um, another area that they could tap into would be the pigs from space or pigs in space. Pigs in space, yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be really fun to see. See cosplays of? I hope somebody does that. Oh. Um, the cosplay special guest this year, um, no, I've forgotten her name. But I saw her panel. She was amazing. Oh, okay. And when she came for like panel day on Saturday, she was dressed up in that final coronation outfit from Trinity Blood. I don't know how many fans there are out there of Trinity Blood. I don't know that you'd recognize nope. it because that's an anime and manga thing. That, mm -hmm. but yeah, it was so cool to see that gown and like it was so big and detailed and beautiful. And she like hand embroidered all this stuff and like put pearls on it herself and. It was just phenomenal. Uh, it was it was an all around good time. So many good costumes. Yeah, the amount of talent and time and experience and like detail that goes into these costumes, it's completely mind blowing. Yeah, it's it's worth it just to see all the cosplay alone. Like the cosplay is something else. Uh, there was a really cute Sailor Moon one too I ran across. There was yes. a woman dressed as Wicked Lady and her little girl was dressed as like Super Sailor Moon. And it, it was so adorable. It was nice seeing kids get into it as yeah. well. Yeah, she was there for the kids costume <laughs> contest. Now, I don't know how that went after, but I mean, I'm sure you could look it up on Sci-Fi's page because I think they did live broadcast the costume okay. contest for the kids. So that might still be up on their Facebook, but like, I'm going to check it out myself because I don't know if that little girl won or not. Her Sailor Moon was so good. Yeah. 
I wonder if they're going to eventually get more things for kids around her age, though. Um, like, because they're not going to sit down and watch a panel, I don't think. Or... There are a lot of activities, though, that are made for, like, kids to participate kids? in, yeah. Okay, because I've seen, like, a puppet making one. I thought that would be really cool, but unfortunately it wasn't going on during the hours that I was there. Um, so maybe that would be because of something that Yeah, and everything to. is fan-run, and the whole convention is volunteer. Mm -hmm. uh, they were a little bit short-staffed this year compared to other years, but they still pull it off. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, like, everybody that runs and does the convention, it is a labor of love. Um, because that is 100% volunteer work. All the panels are um, selected by the uh, main jury people that run the convention. And again, that's all fans submitting things like us of things they want to do for mm -hmm. like events and mm -hmm. workshops and information discussions. And there were all kinds of like D&D games being held this year yeah. and stuff too, like little mini one-shot campaigns. And um, one of my friends was a panelist which was amazing because I hadn't seen her in years, so it was a chance to like get to see her again. Um, Reconnect. Yeah, we went to university together. She did the theater program uh, while I was doing the fine arts program. So mm -hmm. we were in the same building and we always saw each other. And there was crossover with the art history courses. Um, theater and visual. art took the uh, visual, took the uh, art history courses okay. together. <clears throat> Yeah, she's Lori White. She's an animator. She is so amazing. She's so good. Um, she has done, well, she works with Jamfield Studio now, and she's done work on, most recently, the new um, DC Girls show with the uh, Wonder Woman and Batgirl and, that's coming up. Okay. Um, she did F is for Family while she was like, doing her internship, I and that's think. on Netflix? Yeah, and that's on Netflix. She did Outer Space, which is on Netflix, which I know you and Reggie are particularly looking <laughs> forward to the yes. next season. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it, her panel uh, was the most interesting and unique of any of the ones I've seen because she ran it very much like you would see on Twitch. So she had a setup where you could see her drawing board and she was doing drawing and showing examples of drawing and she was taking questions uh, both about her own life as well as like how to do things in the mm -hmm. field and it was really amazing to hear her story and how she ended up in animation and it was just really <clears throat> good. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed the engine panels. There was two that we attended. Yeah. Um, the is it the dysfunctional writers one? The dysfunctional writers panel was the second one we went to where they yeah. gave advice um about writing and publishing and that kind of stuff and that was in a really fun, fun format yeah that was really fun to hear um i'm not a writer by no means but it was interesting seeing how they got to where there were two and the different types of advice they've been given yeah. over the years and like what's actually relevant and what's not absolutely and i'm looking forward to reading more engine books yeah, I love their up. books. They do anthology series every year that I really love. The From the Rock series is yeah. like probably mm -hmm. one of my favorite things they do. Uh, but they have a lot of really good books, and some of my friends write for them, <laughs> like Matthew Daniels. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's fantastic, and I met um, Ali House uh, for the first time I mm -hmm. think this weekend. Um, with her six elemental series and stuff and I went to her book launch for the second book in that series and I just became hooked from watching that so I picked up both the books the first one and the second one that just came out uh, mm -hmm. the other panel we saw from engine was a new panel that they've just started yes. doing the lit wars yes yeah. which was so much fun <laughs> um, great great debates like yeah. uh, which was better the Hobbit book or movies <laughs> And whether or not you agreed with the stance, you had to take that stance and argue yeah. it. So if you knew nothing about the topic you had to discuss, it was even funnier. <laughs> it's very much improv for some of them. Yes. And, but it was really funny and entertaining. Really well done. And if they do it again next year and you're here for it, absolutely go take part. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And then we had our own panel. We did. We uh, had an event on a Friday. Yes, so Friday evening we had our event, and it ran for about an hour, which yep. was really good. 
Um, I'm not sure how we got booked for two hours, but that's okay. Um, we tried. <laughs> it, but it was super fun. It was. Um, we had good turnout for about 20 odd people. Yep. Uh, they were into it, which was nice to see. Very engaging yeah. and uh, very vocal of what opinion or what way we should go. and. Yeah, so we did, as we discussed earlier, the Diary of Mad Mummy. Yeah. And we read it on our own ahead of time to see what kind of endings we'd get and things like that. But it was so much fun to do it live because we only got one of the endings we'd previously gotten before between the two of us when we yeah. when we did the... I think it was one of yours because I... Yeah, with the robot, which yeah. is like one of the few we <laughs> didn't get. Yeah. And then all the other ones were new. Mm -hmm. um, we would backtrack so far and say to the audience, which, which path do you want to take next? And yeah. so when we got, after we got an ending, we went back and we'd go to the next point where the audience wanted to make a different choice. And pretty much the audience told us how far to go back to which decision, which was yeah. awesome. They were yeah. like, no, we'll go back to this decision. Let's yeah. try this now. <laughs> we missed room service by like this much, which my Hufflepuff heart breaks <laughs> for, but we were this close to room service for one of them. Um, but we did four different endings, which was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, we, we really like made fun of the book as a whole in the room, but it was good because if you've ever read these books, R.L. Stein very much makes fun of himself and mm -hmm. his own plot devices and Absolutely. his own things anyway. Like yeah. he's a very self-aware writer and yeah. he has a very good sense of humor about it. And he even says like, listen, I know it's in English and it's ancient Egypt, just just go with it, just go with it. <laughs> we had, um, we had a, a very strong opinion of sacrificing one of the sisters. Yes, and, uh, uh, the audience started like absolutely going, sacrifice Susie, please, can we sacrifice her? So then when there was finally an ending where you could, they were like, oh my god, yes, let's sacrifice Susie. And I'm still broken hearted that we couldn't sacrifice Derek because he opened the door and brought the mummy in and I stand And then did that. basically nothing while the mummy choked yep. you. I mean, come yep. on. <laughs> we, we did all want to sacrifice Derek. Uh, that being said, a couple of the options where you chose to save your brother ended up him, him getting sacrificed with you anyway, so it was all right. I mean, yeah. he got his comeuppance. <laughs> Eventually. Um, also, we got introduced to a robotic mummy. Yes. That was less realistic looking, as in short in stature, kind of frail, and more of Dwayne Johnson, The Rock looking. Like. So still a mummy, still accurate. Oh, yeah. Scorpion yeah. King? Yeah, oh, yeah but yeah. with bandages. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Still strong as hell. <laughs> so that was really fun. And uh, the audience, or the, I don't want to say audience, but like those who came in to take in the panel and contribute, um, they were very much into it. They were contributing as much as they can. They were giving their opinions. They were saying, you know, whether or not they believed in things. And yeah. we had one guy that knew the book by heart and mm -hmm. was like, oh, you got to do this ending next because this one's going to be really good. Like, And he could do the mummy's voice, too, mm -hmm. really well, yeah. which was something neither of us could imitate nope. nor did we want to try. <laughs> no. But uh, we did okay. We didn't stumble too much. and uh, There was a little bit of stumbling, but it was all right. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> it, it was, was fun. a lot of fun. Nobody died. Everybody survived. We were fine. <laughs> and we did the mummy book because we had just been reading mummy books yeah. in the book club. And it was really funny because right in the middle of it, all of a sudden, is a direct reference where it was like, you must have read Return of the Mummy by Arl Stein to know which choice is the right choice to take. Yeah. And you had to remember the chant that was used. And how many times it was used. And you're like, we know this information. We've studied. It's like, oh my god, this is a real thing. <laughs> We're going to ace this exam. But yeah, it was it was fun. And it was great to see how many like really young people that were there. To, like, yeah be into goosebumps still it was fantastic yeah. and the next day at the convention on saturday um we heard from people as we saw them around the convention yeah. saying, you know hey that was fun which was really great it was there's this one girl who had a great costume she was dressed as a what was her name sally, sally and it, the wig was made of yarn and then the next day she was dressed as a disney princess i'm not sure which one Oh, maybe. I can't remember which one. But she was very much into it, so it was nice seeing her there yeah. in a different costume. She was, like, very um, much into the convention. There was another young girl, too, who ended up hanging out with us for a while Saturday, who came to the information panel as yeah. well. Yeah. That was also, like, really into the whole thing, and so that was great. She would have been somebody that us at her age would have gotten along with. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and it was just, it was a really good experience. Everybody was really good to us. Um, 
the convention people like for the first panel were there and mm -hmm. like helped us out for the first event and then when we went for the second event well the second one which was our information panel we had some technical difficulties uh, which Reggie helped us through with but also there were these two extremely nice women mm -hmm. who they weren't even there for our panel they had just finished seeing the previous panel and they were just sort of chilling out in the room until ours was ready to start and we were having trouble with the Wi-Fi and the convention Wi-Fi wasn't working the way it was supposed to mm -hmm. and because they were staying at the hotel they were like you can use our hotel Wi-Fi. Mm. They to, like save the day. Yeah, so they gave us their room number and stuff so <laughs> we could use it like free access. Yeah. Because the password they gave us um, for the sci-fi Wi-Fi didn't really work it out. Didn't, yeah. So they gave us their information and we used it and we were able to get access to our uh, presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, because at the last minute, wouldn't you know it, even though it was saved on a thumb drive like it was supposed to be, it just did not... The computer we had would not register the thumb drive no, like, and, at all. I mean, it was tried on two computers going in, so it wasn't like it didn't work. No, it, was just, it, was it like, worked on two separate computers. And we computers. tried it on two different ports yeah. on that little mini laptop that was there, and it would not register. So I think it was something to do with that laptop we had. It could have been. But either way, the day was saved because those <laughs> women were so nice and yes. let us do that. And we had to give our presentation, which was for a much smaller crowd, but five people for the second one. Yeah. But they were five people that really wanted to be there and were very active and oh, yeah. really participated, which was great. We had a really good conversation with them. They seemed very interested in uh, the Goosebumps series and then... In horror in general. Yeah. So we're talking to us about Stephen King. They're like our type <laughs> of people. I'm sure we would all get along for like coffee or something. Oh yeah, it was awesome. And uh, there was actually a mother there with her daughter who was saying like, I want to go back and read Goosebumps again now. Yeah. Like, that was really great. Um, I think you mentioned too that that event was labeled mislabeled as an activity opposed to a panel. Yes, so that it may was. Have so that resulted. may have resulted in a less of an audience, especially if they thought it might have been the same thing as the activity the night before because they'd already been so Yeah, yeah. Um, and that makes complete sense. Yeah, but it was still, it was so much fun. Yeah. It was great and it was really good to meet those people. I'd rather have a small crowd of very interactive people who are like asking in questions in, yeah. in it opposed to like a very silent big room. Which is kind of daunting and frightening. <laughs> But yeah, it was it was really good interactions. We met new people that we were just like so excited to meet. We would have never got to meet otherwise. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, and Saint uh, Saint John's Soapworks is another company that's kind of local to the area. Um, they had some absolutely amazing bath bombs. They, they had did that horror themed. They did. You're gonna have to send me a picture so I can insert this oh. in the video because <laughs> uh, they had a bunch of horror ones, but you picked up three particular ones that I knew you were I going did. to. Yes. Um, I got two Beetlejuice ones, one of Beetlejuice's face and another one of sandworm. the sandworm. And I got uh, the shark from Jaws, but there was also a little paper boat shaped one from It. Yeah. And um, what was the other one that it had? There? there was a Jason one. Yep. There was a bunch of different ones. Anyways, check them out if you're into horror bath products because they got some great stuff. And their detailing was superb on these bath bombs. I was so impressed. So for our information panel, um, we do have video of that. We do. Uh, Reggie filmed that for us, which was great. And we are going to put that up next. And a lot of the information for that came from both research online as well as this book. So it was really fun to get to read this and dive into it. So if you want to know a lot more about um, R. L. Stein's background and where some of the ideas come for the Goosebumps books, uh, that's the thing you're gonna wanna watch. Yeah. A really neat thing that I don't think I got to mention in the panel that I learned from reading this book uh, is that he wrote two a month at the beginning when the series first started. Oh. He wrote two Goosebumps books a month. And I think it's really funny not knowing that before then. When we started this book club, we started going two a month seems like a doable thing, right? <laughs> and we just started doing two of these a month. So I thought that was a neat little parallel. <laughs> More like connected spiritually <laughs> or something. Um, it was also really neat to find out uh, some things that he said were his favorite at the time. Like Slappy the Dummy. Mm -hmm. That was his favorite evil character that he got to write. And apparently it's still his favorite, which is why he features so much in the movies and stuff. 
and uh, so that was really neat to learn, especially now while we're doing these dummy mm -hmm. books. This is actually like his favorite bad and guy. His influences and how we were familiar with those. It was just, it was really interesting and I think it... It's really neat to read something that's a reflection of somebody's life up to that point and see just how much things you do um, as a kid that you just generally become interested in, how mm -hmm. much they impact what you do later and don't realize it. Yeah, yeah. So that video is coming up next. Yeah, so if you guys want to see that panel, go ahead. And uh, in the meantime, I guess, reader beware. You're in for a scare.